I'm so glad we finished on time. That was so stressful. Yeah, I had fun though, but and we got to wear our bucks. Guys, everyone had such cool stuff to show us. Howard's had the best food ever. <laughs> yeah, really. Guys. Well, we should talk about those interviews though. They played such good music. Yeah, they were all really talented musicians. Guys, what? You realize they haven't seen the film yet. Oh. You got to go to the people, really, and get that information. For seven days. Well, in the actually, it was six and a half days. I'm just saying. I was going for a thing, but fine. For six and a half days, we set out to the streets of Omaha. It was South Omaha, technically. South Omaha to make the invisible histories visible. You know what? I'll just take oh over. God. With that being said, a group of filmmakers interviewed musicians, ate amazing food, and worked tirelessly to bring you... Es inútil que quieras lo que fue y ya no es. Es inútil que quieras comenzar otra vez. Sin rencor ni temores, quiero vivir en paz. Quiero encontrar mi suerte y no dejarla jamás. Mexican-American music didn't just appear in Omaha. It had to come from somewhere. The culture was brought to us through Mexican immigrants. They have been here since 1910, though in the 1950s there was a big wave of Mexican immigrants, not only due to the economic effects of the Porfirieto and the violence of the Mexican Revolution, but because of the agricultural, railroad, and stockyard industries in Omaha. Since then, the culture has grown tremendously through the development of families here in South Omaha. You know, there's so many cultures, and Omaha's always been kind of an immigrant, you know, town. When you look at the years, the years of the stockyards and all the, you know, the Czechs, the, all the different, you know, Italians, and then all these different areas, and, and the Mexicans were there too. And, and I think some people don't realize a lot of these ethnic groups have been here for a, a long time. Uh, but the Hispanics and the Mexican American community's been here a very, very long time. So, my grandfather, Felix Lara, came from Guanajuato, Mexico. And he came uh, over, he crossed over with some family members, and he came in search for a better life for his family. And when he came here, he, um, he worked, and of course, in the fields, and then also on the railroad tracks. After South Omaha experienced a wave of Mexican immigrants in the 1950s, traditional mariachi music filled the community. Throughout time, Mexican culture and music was showcased in South Omaha. Well, I live in South Omaha, so music is a very big part of our identity, I feel. Uh, everywhere you go, even in a small restaurant, in a small shop, there's music. There has to be some sort of authentic music playing in the background. When we celebrate, there has to be music. When we cry, we cry more passionately to a particular song. When we are stressed, you know, we may have something like a, a song that identifies that stress. When you hear the stories of, from the old timers, the, the music they got was from the live music and a lot of it was house parties in the very early years and then, you know, Tampico and later on Tropicana. You know, in my grandfather's time, they were really the main musicians. Those first three years, they were kind of the early ones in the 1920s and 30s. And then, and then they had other groups of people that would move around and the Huertas came in the 40s. Uh, he played and then some more musicians came to the scene and then you look at the 50s and 60s as time went on It started to grow more and other you know the music expanded to where maybe it was an acoustic in the first year But then later as we got I think more in the 50s 60s It turned more into like a, a band like a group or maybe there were drums and then the 70s It went into you know this other Tex-Mex type of genre 70s and 80s um, and then from there you start to see this population surge and then you start to see more people learning the music and passing it down and so then you see more more musicians and so that's why now it's just there's so many you i can't believe how many there are. you can't keep track of them all i love that feeling of playing somewhere and playing el son de la negra which is like one of the most traditional mariachi songs and having people turn their eyes and say oh oh my gosh i know that song Mexican-American musicians thrive in and through families. However, like all musicians, the best way to share music is through performing. 
These artists and mariachi bands began popping up in new and old venues across the city. Well, I think Howard's it was always the heart of, you know, having mariachi musicians and just kind of a special feeling, you know, of playing there. And everybody knew everybody. Now there's so many, everybody doesn't know everybody, but back then everybody did. And I think their supportiveness of the arts was always good. So it almost felt like a second home, just going in the restaurant and playing, and, you know. You would play for the people and they liked it. And, you know, they would give you, at the end, you'd have food. And there was something special about that ambience of doing that. So I actually started playing at Howard's when I was about 12 or 13 years old. That was like my debut <laughs> um, with the mariachi group that I was in when I was younger. Um, and it was like a weekly thing. So we had people coming in there like just because there was mariachi music on Fridays. They wouldn't even eat. They would just go listen to the music. Food and music sort of go together. And wherever there was a really good restaurant, they would have entertainment, uh, some on Wednesday, some on Thursday, and, and naturally Friday, Saturday. Everyone has their own reason as to why they are a musician. Most always, it involves the love of performing. When you're playing an instrument and you're singing, you are connecting on a, on a level that you don't have to touch that person to connect with that person, but if they can hear you sing, they, they feel it, they feel the music. So. Performing in a live audience is sometimes nerve-wracking, uh, but it's one of the most undescribable sensations I feel that you could have um, for many reasons. You entertain people, you're doing what you love, and you are just having like such a good time doing it. There was one time we were playing at a festival in Lincoln, Nebraska, and something that I like to do a lot when I perform is I like to get close to the, our audience and interact with them. Um, there was a man in a wheelchair. Um, I'm not sure uh, what like was going on with his health, but he couldn't really move um, and he couldn't speak. And we were singing this particular song. It was like a love song. It was me and another girl. And I went up to him and I sang to him and I grabbed his hand and he started crying. Um, after that, um, the man's mother came up to us and she started crying and she thanked us because she said that um, he felt very special because we gave him that attention. Throughout the making of the documentary, the filmmakers learned that oftentimes musicians aren't just performing for themselves, they're performing for the people. You know, music is universal. It doesn't matter what kind of genre, you can play any style. You know, and that's where you then you start to connect with people like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that. You know, do the Nebraska fight song. You go, going from Rancho Grande into da 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 da. And the people are like, wow, you know, and then they start clapping and dancing. So now you've made a connection. You know, how do you connect with the people? It's just not, you know, we can play for ourselves, but I think as an artist, I think what some people don't realize is, yeah, sometimes when you're at your home and do whatever, you, maybe you record that, you play that for yourself. But then there comes a point when you're a performer, you, you gotta kind of play for them and play for everybody. And that's where it becomes a little fun if you can really get them to relate and have fun with it. A way that we have to adjust to our audience when we're performing, one of the most noticeable ways that we do it is if we have like solely Spanish speaking audience, we won't perform certain like English songs, right? Um, another thing is, depending on what part of Mexico the audience is from, surprisingly, they have different requests. So, if they're from northern Mexico, they'll, they're, they're going to ask for certain songs that represent their states. If they're from southern Mexico, they're going to ask for other songs that represent their type of music, um, like sones. Um, other people prefer like ballads or slow songs, depending on where they're from. It just kind of depends. So it goes a little bit more than just singing and performing. It's it's also like kind of getting to know who you're playing for so that you can satisfy them when you do perform. Some musicians get into music because it's part of their family tradition. Other times a mentor recognizes their talent. Marcos Mora, a uh, big promoter of Mexican and Mexican-American uh, music. Uh, my son, Johnny Ray the Fourth has performed with him on keyboards. I worked with a lot of kids, so for about 10 years, I just worked with them and then they kind of learned the music and then so that kind of passed it on to someone else and now they're all out playing. 
it was a talent show that I sang Mexico Lindo y Querido, which is just a song that I learned to perform at the talent show. And I remember that's when Marcos was there and he saw me sing. He started Las Estrellitas and I actually began playing with Las Estrellitas when I was 12. They were like my second family growing up because we would spend every weekend together performing at parties, going out of town. Now I look back and I'm grateful because if it wasn't for all the people that he tied me to, I feel like I would not, I would not have continued with music. Marcos kept us going, but now who's, it's, it's up to us to keep the next generation going. So that's kind of where I'm in right now, trying to figure out what can I do to still keep the music alive and to teach the younger generation. It's important to keep that tradition and that genuine tradition alive, not just halfway. Music, much like culture, changes and adapts over time. As people stay in America, their music gains a sort of Americanized feel. Many artists want to be unique, so they put a twist on traditional music to create a new sound true to themselves. The band that I play with, we have a mixture of everything. So it's a lot of young musicians, but we also have like older that are very, very traditional. So we like to mix, not mix, but have a combination of both. For example, we have started to even perform like English music in mariachi style. That's something that before it would never really happen. Um, that's one of the biggest changes. Also like attire has changed and it's evolved. The more modernized group that I was in was the Las Cecilias. And I feel like just over the years we've modernized more. But we were very, very traditional. But even being a younger generation, we put our own twist to it. Much like other career paths, women are underrepresented in the Mexican-American music scene. Mariachi music is traditionally dominated by men. The filmmakers sought to hear the female perspective. I feel that women in Mexican-American music scene um, even though there are quite a few artists that could be named out and pinpointed, um, it's still sort of like we are a minority. Um, a lot of recognition goes to the men or the males that perform. Um, when you think of mariachi specifically, you mostly think of men, you know, in their attire. Um, in Mexican music, though, I feel like women do have a big part of it because a lot of songs are written in a way like a love. So it's either from like the male to a female or the female to a male. So there always has to be that sort of like connection between a, a guy and a girl within the music. Growing up and being in groups because I've been grouped with when there's men and women. So um, it is challenging at times. When you're in a group together, you try to find a balance and try to be as a team rather than than one, one role overpowering the other. So from what I've experienced, I've never have experienced that where I've felt a minority. My, personally, I've never felt as a minority when I've been in a group. And that's probably because I've grown up with the musicians that I've been with since I was young. So that's my personal experience. One of the biggest ways that women can be more involved in, and not be seen like such a minority, I guess, um, and I've seen it, like I've experienced it hands-on, where we will go play somewhere or perform somewhere and men will want, there's like particular songs that they want a male to sing because it's best suited for a male. Um, I feel like just kind of on the surface level, um, one of the most influential things you could do is, you know, standing up for those kind of comments or requests and, you know, saying like, hey, you know, I can still perform this song or I can still sing this song or even just be charge of a group itself, most of the time it's men who are in charge of the group. Um, it could be also a female that's coordinating and in charge of, of an ensemble. Some of the interview subjects had a few words of advice for the filmmakers. Now remember, the dear Lord, if he planned it that everyone would play a musical instrument, no one would be in the audience, right? So he gave different talents to different people. Whatever your passion is, just let that drive you. You know, don't let other people influence that passion that you have for a particular hobby or thing that you like to do. Music is an expressive art form through words, instruments, and feeling. There are various reasons for people to have this strong passion. 
Uh, to me, music is a soulful breath of air. To me, music is love, passion, and freedom. To me, music is some way to touch a person's memory, their funny bone, or their heart. So to me, music is finding fulfillment while inspiring the lives of others. Throughout this documentary, we were walked through the hidden history of Mexican-American music in Omaha, Nebraska. Many of the subjects within this film discussed how music brings people closer together and how it highlights culture in a community. During the creation of this documentary, we, the filmmakers, definitely bonded over the Mexican-American hidden culture in the city we call home. Now, as I was saying, it was a pretty great week. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, honestly it was really good. good. vacío y lo voy a empezar. Tengo sed de caricias, tengo ganas de amar. Hoy comienza mi vida una página